Welcome to the 10 Minute Mindshift Podcast. I'm your host, Janet Kegel, certified life coach, weight loss coach, and lover of all things related to upleveling my life and yours. My goal is to help you get one step closer to your goal, whatever it is. My goal is not to keep you wrapped up in self help all day, just 10 minutes. And who doesn't have 10 minutes, right? Welcome back, friends. I am so excited for this episode because if you apply no other tool to your life, the concepts and ideas that I share with you today for sure will change the way you experience your life. This is episode number 106, Wordscaping, and it's the fourth installment of the Life by Design Intentional Living series designed to help you create your best year ever. So let's go. Number four. Be intentional with your words. Wordscaping. Now, that kind of sounds like, uh, duh. I mean, we all grew up hearing our parents say things like, don't say things you don't mean, don't say things you'll regret, and don't say things that aren't true. Don't call people names, and of course, don't let someone leave this earth before you say what you have to say to them. Those are all great pieces of advice, but the focus of all of those words were also very focused on the well-being of the other person not necessarily yours. Now, let's be clear, I'm not advocating for you to go around calling people names and saying things that aren't true about others, but what about you? Notice this week how your brain talks to you about you. Notice how your brain offers you untrue statements about you. Notice how your brain offers you thoughts that if you said them out loud to someone else about someone else, you would immediately regret them. Notice your internal dialogue with yourself about yourself. Notice the story that your brain offers and notice the words and phrases and tones of how your inner self speaks to you about you. And then ask yourself if someone spoke to me in that way with that tone using those words, how endeared to them would I actually be? How much time would I want to spend with them? Would I look forward to our time together or would I dread it? Would I feel drained after being with them or would I be energized? So many of my students tell me they would never continue or foster a relationship with anyone like that. And yet we are doing it to ourselves. Words do effect. I don't know who said sticks and stones may break by bones, but words can never hurt me because that's not quite true. How we choose to describe ourselves to ourselves and to others is how we will show up to them and to us. How we choose to describe our life is how our life will be experienced and it's how we will show up to it. Notice how you describe your life to others. When someone asks, how are you doing? What do you respond with? really notice that. The self-image that we currently have will determine what we think about ourselves and it will be how we create our life. Our own self-concepts will predict our life. It is our internal life designer. Our self-concepts are nothing more than what we think about ourselves so often that they become who we believe that we are. I know that it feels like hard wiring, like there isn't anything that can be done about it. And so many times I hear my students say, well, that's just the way I am, as if they don't have any agency over how they are. A few years ago, I mentored a lovely and sweet woman who came to me for a life redesign. When I asked her to describe her current state, she used words like crazy, 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 and chaotic and exhausting. I asked her what it would feel like if her life was not crazy and chaotic and exhausting. I asked her to describe the life she actually wanted to experience. And then I asked her the last time she experienced what she had just described and her response was yesterday. Her first step in designing her life wasn't to do anything except wordscape. When she stopped describing her life as crazy and chaotic and exhausted, she started feeling differently about her life. If you were to have met her, she would impress you with her calm and soothing demeanor, but she got in the habit of responding to people who asked how she's doing with crazy, 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 and busy, 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 and she did this so much that she started believing that that it was exactly how she was living her life. 
From there, she was able to wordscape how she talked about her career, her marriage, and her relationship with her children. And wouldn't you know it, she already had the exact life she was craving to redesign. That, my friend, is how powerful your words are to yourself. We literally only changed how she described her life, and that changed the way she experienced her life. As humans, we submit to a belief that is nothing more than a thought that was thought over and over and over so often that we start taking on its persona. For a long time, I have been describing myself as someone who does not like to travel, a homebody, the anti-traveler. So you can imagine with that kind of wordscaping about travel, the challenges that I face when I'm faced with travel. It isn't enjoyable or anything I find myself looking forward to. This is the work that I am currently doing because the impact is that my hubby wants to travel and he would love it if I would love it too. Now I do travel often and as much as I love going to see my grandbabies and my daughter, the travel is a bummer for me. If I do it, I wanna enjoy it. I don't wanna grudgingly travel, I wanna joyfully travel. So that's my work. I can be a homebody and love travel too. I can do both. I just need to figure it out. Another way that I used to describe myself is someone who has a hard time reading and comprehending what I just read. And I did a lot of work around this. And the truth is there was zero truth to that thought. But I thought it so much and it was told to me so much as a kid that I believed it and then lived it even when I had so much evidence that the opposite was true. Now that might sound like a very simplistic example, but I cannot count how many times I did not speak up because I thought surely I misread something or didn't understand something that I read. I can't tell you how much anxiety I experienced when an email would hit my inbox and the first thought that I had was, I wonder how many times I'm gonna to have to read this one. It affected the way I showed up for so many years and the only thing that was off was the words that I used to describe myself. How many of you are telling yourself that you can't control yourself around food or you're just terrible at relationships or that your mom's skills are lacking or money just isn't in the cards for you? I know it doesn't seem like those words would be powerful enough to have an effect on your life, but they are. And I know that you tell yourself you don't fit in, you don't need help, you just aren't organized or you're terrible with time or this is a good one, I can't. I know that all those words are words that you say to yourself because I am human and I say them to me too. We say things to ourselves that we would never ever say to anyone else. And so this week, be very aware of your wordscaping, your inner dialogue, your words that you use to talk to yourself about yourself, the words that you use to describe your life, the words that you use in contrast to how you desire to think about your life and look for evidence that the way you actually desire to think about yourself is available to you right now, just as you are right now today. As you're noticing thoughts like, I have no control around food, catch yourself and ask yourself how you want to be around food and then start looking for evidence that you are already just like that person. When you notice thoughts like, I'm a terrible mom or grandma, catch yourself and ask yourself how you wanna be as a mom or a grandma and look for the evidence that you are already that person. Be the editor in chief of your words and how you use them to describe yourself in every aspect of your life. And then notice how you start experiencing your life differently. All right, my friends, that is what I have for you this week. And now go have the best day ever. That's a wrap. I hope that you were able to experience a mind shift of your own today. Listen, if you love this podcast, you should totally check out my Life by Design six-week boot camp. It's a work-at-your-own-pace workshop and something that you can do over and over and over again to up-level your results and get ready for a transformation at the speed of life.